I asked for a car, I got a computer. How's that for being born under a bad sign? Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Well, hello, scholars. Welcome back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I appreciate you clicking on the video. As you know, I'm a professional artist and master educator attempting to bring you the best in art historical content. And I appreciate any interactions that you have with the video or the channel. appreciate the subscribers and the likes and the comments and all the, all the rest. So, thanks. Pardon my French, but you're an asshole. So out here in my neck of the woods, it rains a little bit. And on a rainy day, you know, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? You can draw and you can do all that kind of thing. But one of the things that I like to do is I like to watch movies. You know, I'll do a Netflix, a Hulu, a Disney Channel. I'll do, a, you know, Apple Plus. I'll do anything. I'll, I'll go on any streaming service and I'll watch just about anything. Uh, you can check out my Burger Acres channel. There's a link down below. And uh, I do a little bit of movie reviews and stuff like that. But anyway... Uh, when, you know, when I'm, when I'm catching movies or whatnot, sometimes things really catch my eye. And I rewatched a movie recently, a classic from the 80s called Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Hopefully you're familiar with it. And in that film, Ferris Bueller and his cohorts decide to go to the Chicago Art Institute and take in some of the great art that's available to them in the city of Chicago. And so what they do is they go through there and, I don't know that this has ever been done. I'm sure it maybe has on some level. But what I want to do is I want to break it down and give you an explanation of all of the artwork, all of the great pieces that they get to see during their experience on their day off. So without further ado, here we do. So as the students approach the Art Institute of Chicago, the first artwork that they approach is right outside by Edward Kimes, a famed set of sculptures, this one being the South Lion, which is different from the other, which actually has its mouth open, but I digress, and our trio of kids goes on inside. The first scene inside, they actually work their way into a school field trip. Now this shot features three paintings and a sculpture. First, we've got an oil painting by Gustave Cabot called Paris Street Rainy Day, an absolute icon of the Art Institute, along with Adam by Rodin, and two oil paintings by Paul Gauguin, The Ancestors of Tahamana, and Elysiennes. This is followed by a single shot of a single painting, Edward Hopper's famous Nighthawks. Blink if you understand me. This is followed by two works by Wesley Kandinsky, Improvisation Number 30, as well as Painting with a Green Center. The next shot consists of two sculptures and a painting. We see a Picasso nude under a pine tree, flanked by two works by Giacometti, Three Men Walking 2 and Walking Man 2. And let us continue to walk on down the path through Ferris Bueller's artwork. He is just leading you down the primrose path. The next shot of two and a quarter paintings will examine left to right, starting with that sliver of the waterfall by Henry Rousseau, followed by Woman Before an Aquarium, baited by the great liberator of color, Henry Matisse, and third and certainly not least, one of my absolute favorites by Pablo Picasso, the old guitarist. Never had one lesson. The next shot actually features four works of art. Let's identify them. In the lower left corner, we see Side Chair by Bruno Paul. And right behind that is Winged Figure, created by the American artist and educator Abbott Henderson Taylor. The prominent painting in the shot is by Mary Cassatt, known as The Child's Bath. And in the far right of the shot is a Amor Caritas, a bronze work by Augustus St. Gaudens. This brings us to a quick shot with two paintings in it. The more prominent work is by Modigliani, a painting of Jock and Betty Lipchitz. 
And to the right is a work by an artist that we've seen already, Paul Gauguin, this one being titled The Day of the God. It's true. Now this next shot is absolutely layered and packed with art. Let's break this one down. Now way in the back left we see this painting by Gorky, the plow and the song. As we move left to right, we then see a sculpture, Tank Totem 1 by David Smith. And as we continue on, we come to Grade Rainbow by the abstract expressionist Jackson Pollock, bringing us to another sculpture, this one untitled by Noguchi. And just a sliver next to that is an oil painting by Hans Hoffmann known as The Golden Wall which he created after studying early Fauvism and Cubism. Isms, in my opinion, are not good. A person should not believe in an ism. He should believe in himself. Again, in this shot, we see two works of art and one that's kind of a sliver. We'll start with the sliver. Yet another work by Henri Matisse, this one called Daisies. Next to that, a sculpture, White Negris II, created by Constantine Brunkouche. And the dominant painting in this shot is The Bathers by a River, again by Henri Matisse. Which brings us to the next shot. Let's ignore the three paintings in the background and focus on the left and the sculpture in the foreground. This one, a bronze by Henry Moore, titled Working Model for UNESCO Reclining Figure. And that painting to the left is Treasure Hunt, an oil painting by Jean Dubuffet. All right, now the next shot is absolutely packed once again with artwork. So here we go. We start with a slightly glared out version of a portrait of Edouard Manet created by Henry Fanton Latour. The couple looking at the artwork in the gallery are standing right in front of Edgar Degas' painting of Henry Degas and his niece, Lucy Degas. And just to the right of that, we find another Degas painting, The Millinery Shop. As our eye moves to the foreground, we see the great sculpture created by Auguste Rodin and his portrait of Balzac. And just behind him, to the right, we see essentially a wall of Claude Monet. First off, we have this painting of the Petit Cruz River. We then see stacks of wheat, sunset snow effect, as well as boats on the beach at Itrida. And finally, the laundress, but this one is by Pierre Auguste Renoir. I appreciate your understanding. Now, this is an iconic shot from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. We see four paintings in the background of our three leading characters. So let's break this one down. First, on the far left of the frame, we see another Paul Gauguin. This one, a woman in front of a still life by Cezanne. Just to the right of that, Equestrine by Henri Toulouse-Lautrec. And the one covered by Matthew Broderick or Ferris Bueller's head is The Plate of Apples by Paul Cezanne. And lastly, to the far right, The Poet's Garden painted by Vincent Van Gogh. All right, returning our attention to the wall with three Picassos, we have Red Armchair, a portrait of Sylvia David, as well as Femme Aussie. Then we have a bit of an intimate scene between Ferris and Sloane, his girlfriend, where they are sitting in front of the center panel of the American Windows by Marc Chagall. And what is perhaps the most iconic part of this entire scene, where Ferris Bueller's best friend Cameron stands in front of this painting, almost in an act of self-reflective epiphany, this great work by George Seurat, A Sunday on Le Grand Girat. And that concludes our art tour of Ferris Bueller's Day Off, looking at 47 different artworks by 32 artists. And I hope that inspires you to watch the film with a little bit different perspective, if you have the means. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. Thank you. Yes? I love that movie. I love that story. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you being able to share it with me. Cameron, what have you seen today? Nothing good. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. This.